Oh, it's working. Why would that change? Why would that change? Mm. I don't know. I don't know why that would change. Why well, thank you, it's still not up. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, he wanted to watch live. <laughs> I'd like to hear this echo. Wow, this is going great. Guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the CG Cookie Concept live stream. We do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, minus 6 GMT if you're outside of the U.S. And I usually post the topics about two hours before the stream, and I let you guys know that come to this stream what the stream will be on for next week. Next week, since we hit our 2,500 goal a, a couple weeks ago, we're going to do a collab stream. So along with my six roommates and myself, we're going to be doing a full stream next week. So if you are excited to see six different artists use six different styles for, I want to say like we'll each probably get 20 to 30 minutes and draw minutes and draw something uh, for you guys. So that'll be kind of a fun stream. It's definitely more casual, more laid back. And I'm looking forward to that one a lot because we had a lot of fun on the last one. Uh, the only few announcements I have, where's my little notes? And... Uh, also, I guess I should point out right away, if you're new to these streams, please put at CJ Cookie Concept before your question or comment, just so it's easier for us to find them. And since we have a moderator again, it will be easier for us to see them, but it's always nice to have that direct, easy to see comment. Um, okay, the only things I have before we go are, there's a citizen stream tonight, so if you are a member at CJCookie.com, I'm going to be doing a stream on how to paint and blend, and we're going to be doing a simple object, so it's an apple. And essentially, I'm going to be walking you through the very fundamentals of digital painting, how to blend, how to make something look rounded, and things of that nature. So you can find that below from the link. Uh, the second thing is, I oh, my etcher bag isn't here, but I did a tutorial on the etcher bag. I edited it yesterday, and it will be out tomorrow. And it's a free tutorial, so if you are interested in purchasing the etcher bag, it's actually not quite available yet. They're doing a new Kickstarter either next week or the week after. And you can find more information on that if you just Google the Etcher Satchel. And I, oh, it's from the Nomad, I should say. It's Nomad Art Satchel. You're on the wrong account. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I'm really excited about... <gasps> my books came! <laughs> uh, this has been something that I have been waiting for, and I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for it as well. So here's a first little glance at it. A little cold shine, shing, shing, shing. And I was really pleased to say that there were no like glaring errors. And I did a lot of editing on the white parts of the book to make sure there was no, especially like these pages. This page, a lot of people will see a lot of characters. <gasps> so a lot of people see characters. I see hell. This page <laughs> was hell. <laughs> But it turned out great, and I'm really proud of it. So if you want a copy for yourself, I, am be, I will be putting them on my Etsy store tomorrow. So I'm really, really excited for these. So thank you guys again who kickstarted me back in January and February. You guys will be the first to receive it, and then the pre-orders will be soon after. Uh, the next thing is... Or I'll do... Yeah, I'll talk about... There is a contest upcoming. That's why we're doing the banner today. There's a contest. We do these every season, so every spring, winter, summer, fall. And this one has been a little delayed just because of the new site coming out and making sure that the contest was integrated in the actual site. So we're really close. I keep telling you guys that, and I know you're probably at the point of like, oh, we don't believe you, Tim. But I promise it's pretty much there, and it'll launch soon. And I think I wanted this banner to kind of confirm it's happening, and I wanted to give you guys an insight as to what the theme is. A lot of you kind of already know, and you've taken pretty good guesses, so this will probably come to no surprise to many of you today. The last thing is, uh, well, no, we could talk about that later, I guess. Okay, never mind. Um, and today will just be kind of a casual one. We're gonna be switching off painting and answering questions. So if you have any questions for us that you would like to answer, just remember, please put at CG Cookie Concept beforehand. And I think that's all I have. So why don't we go ahead and get started? You know what? I'm gonna move this up though. I don't like. I want that to be higher. What is it? It's supposed to be. Oh, why isn't it showing now? Oh! <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think it's because uh, you switched accounts and you're using the stream profile. You know what? We're just going to have a normal bottom banner today. Sorry, just guys. Simple. Yeah, very simple. Okay. So we did a little pre-sketch. If you can't already tell, we are going to be doing something in the same world as our Battered Bunnies contest. This was a contest that we did, I believe, last ring? Actually, it might have been even before that. February? It might have been two years. Did I put the... I just put the April. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was has been one of my absolute favorite contests. It actually got the most submissions. And it's been kind of requested a lot if we could have another contest for the rival gang that we created for this contest, which was the Battered Bunnies, and the rival gang was the Canines. So, for those of you who kind of guessed it early, yes, the opposing... Oh, right. bless you. <laughs> the opposing uh, gang member is... or gang members are from the Canines. So that is what we're going to be working on today. So, I'm going to go ahead and paint right over it. <coughs> and this stream's also to kind of showcase how not to be so serious and not to treat it like you have to be perfect and do step by step. I'm just gonna like slop on paint and I'll show you how to lay on chaos and then find, what does Pui always call it? It's something, it's like something chaos. It's like organizing chaos or something. Oh, it's just organized chaos, yeah. Yeah, and I, it's something that I don't do as often, and I feel like I should because whenever I do it, I'm always like, man, that was a lot of fun, and I feel like it was less stress on me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be using that method today, and we're going to be using a really crazy texture brush. It's really sharp and angular and has just a bunch of noise and mess. And part of that is so that I'm not focusing so much on the details, but instead I'm focusing on the values. Unless you do hits. What? The silhouette. Yes. And making sure that has a strong silhouette and profile. Alright, so here I'll let you take over questions. So questions. Oh sorry, and you know what? Let's do our quick shout outs. I'm sorry guys. I always ask where you guys are watching from and oh, you have I think this is the first one. Alright, let's try to knock these out fast. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Wait, wait, ready? Are you going first? Okay. Ella from Sweden. Has any <laughs> Cactus from Koi, Croatia. Yushin from Serbia. Uh, Sarath Sura from Washington State. Uh, Gypsy from Southern Oregon. Ian from Norway. Toja from Germany. John from India. Hi, John Miller. How are you doing? Uh, Chrissy from Oregon City. Zane from Ohio. Oh. Uh, the southern part of Ohio. Joe from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Authored Mage has followed your draw October on Instagram. Now I'm excited for October. So are we. Uh, did you? Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'm just so excited to draw today. <laughs> okay. So I'll let Key start moderating. I'll keep okay, drawing okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, one of the Dundanes says, Will you be bringing a sketchbook to cons like Facts in Belgium? I would love to get one. You betcha. Yeah, I'm picking up all the books, hopefully this Friday. Unless if there if there's some error, I'll be really upset. <laughs> but <coughs> I'm hopefully going to be picking them up all on Friday, and I will be traveling with them to every con I go to. And the idea is it's better to buy them at a con just because you don't have to pay for no shipping. shipping. But I know for a lot of you guys that live overseas, that's not much of a possibility unless if for some reason you're going to be in Belgium this October, which we will both be at if you want to meet and greet us we will be at uh fax in mid-october yeah it's like like the, the third 20th? quarter yeah of october, i think so yeah yeah and let's see chrissy says tim love the grandpa sweater oh thank you that's uh, my goodwill sweater you know what? i've gotten more compliments on this sweater than any other article of clothing i own mm, yeah, I other, I've, your own cat shirt maybe oh you know what and the the frog one, where he's dancing in the room. Oh, yeah. That one's a good one. I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, GK Sculpting says, bless you, Key. Thank you. Uh, Tujo says, Battered Bunnies was April 2016. Okay, so, so it was last year. Oh my god. Where yeah, right. did the time go? <laughs> Thank you, Tujo, for finding that, too. Uh, Pala says, was the Battered Bunny contest inspired by Donnie Darko? Uh, no. Um... 
I've always kind of had a fascination with masks, and I think bunny masks in general, just because, to me, it's such a juxtaposition of bunnies feeling very sweet and innocent, but they're also these weird sexual undertones, because bunnies, if you don't know, they reproduce like crazy. So I've always found the bunny, I guess, animal in general to be very interesting and intriguing. So I, I've just personally always been inspired by bunny masks, and then people always say splicers from Bioshock. Bioshock had a huge influence on my life, too. We were just talking about this yesterday night. Key's never played Bioshock. She played the second one without playing the first one. And I was really lost, and I didn't understand anything. So, I'm going to make... We're going to probably, if we can, we might stream it together. So, if you guys... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are ones to want to watch game channels, but we decided we're going to do some streaming of Bioshock. Yeah. First experience with my movies. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> John Miller says, do you have a list of cons you'll be going to coming up? Uh, for this year, yes. And I think Key will be actually at all the ones I'm going to. So it is mm. well, Metacon. Are you doing Con out the late? No. No. Okay. Uh, I'm doing Metacon, mm. in, or we're doing Metacon in Minnesota. Yes. And we're doing Salt Lake. In two weeks, so that's early September. We're doing Salt Lake in late September. Mm. And then Fax in... October. October, which is in Belgium, and then that's, that's it for me this year. year. And then I have Call of Duty in December. Um, in Illinois. Yes, in Illinois. Okay. Um, Tudu says, for the people who are wondering, facts in Belgium is the 21st and 22nd of October. Okay, okay, yeah. Thanks, Tijel. Uh, Owen asks, what type of clothing do the canines wear? All right, so this is definitely something I've been debating in my head because the battered bunnies are definitely more, I would say, rough and tumble and like gathered scraps and put together whatever they have around them. So I think the canines are going to be a little cleaner, mm -hmm. a little more refined. And I think just as like a concept art, like know-how, it's just good to have a contrast. If you have the gangs look too similar, I feel like it gets confusing. Right. And you want to have some way of differentiating them. I mean, obviously we have masks, but you don't want to just have to rely on that, you know. Masks. Oh, and then I guess besides that, we're trying to figure out the weapon. And we were having some mm -hmm. talk before this with our mm -hmm. friend Jonas. And we're thinking something that can draw blood just because I feel like the canines, they symbolize more of a bite. And with the battered bunnies, it just made more sense to have a bat, more of a blunt object. So we were thinking, we were brainstorming, and we came up with a few ideas. I think we really like the nightstick that a police has. Mm -hmm. um, we were thinking chain for a while, as if, like, the leash. We still might draw, actually, a chain on, like, her arm. E. Uh, the other yeah, one, what was bone. the... Oh, a bone. Yeah, that was a... I got a bone to break with you. I feel like that would be... <laughs> I said that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely more on the comical side, but I feel like with these type of concepts, we can have fun with them being a little more nonsensical, more fantastical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas, please let us know, and, because maybe you guys will have a much better idea than us. Yeah. If you guys have any suggestions on how K and I should look, definitely just give us any you guys. Uh, Gabby says, hey Tim, I have a problem with comparing myself to other artists, mm. whatever I see some younger, whenever I see some younger artist who's like 13 and draws like God, I feel like I'll <laughs> never <laughs> be as good as they are. Sorry, I have grammar mistakes. It's okay. I feel like we both see that. I think there's always going to be younger artists coming out of nowhere making amazing art. And, and they're exposed to software right? earlier than and we And they're, they're being exposed to all the things earlier than we were and you can learn a lot faster in that respect um but honestly there's always going to be someone that's better than you it's just something you kind of have to accept and just work on you and get better than yourself than worrying about getting better than others and once you accept that then the people that may have intimidated you then they start to inspire you mm -hmm. so it's not so much of like a oh, I'll never be as good as them. It'll be like, oh, that's a cool idea. Right. Like, let me see if I can wrap my mind around something cool and get inspired from that. 
Plus, I always get excited. Like, instead of getting down, I always get excited to see, like, a young artist doing really amazing. Because who knows, like, maybe it could be a new source of inspiration for you in a few years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ellie says, what are you going to be in Chicago for, Key? Oh, uh, Connaught Delete. It's a little anime convention uh, in Rosemont. I think it's in the Hyatt Hotel. Um, but yeah, it's just like a little anime con, and I'll be tabling there. Uh, let's see. Gypsy says, greasers and socks. <laughs> yeah, definitely more of that clean cut. I feel like yeah. greasers, even though it... The name Greaser probably doesn't imply it, but yeah, they are more clean cut. Mm-hmm. More slicked back and oiled up. Clean. Clean. They bathe. They bathe. <laughs> uh, let's see where we're going to. Uh, Miss Chibi Artist says, Is there a page out for the contest on CG Cookie yet? No. So that will be. You'll, you'll definitely see a big post about it. Um, I'll let you know when it's out. But officially, not yet, mm-hmm. but soon. And I'm going to be getting a lot of my uh, friends as guest artists, and I feel like I've met a lot of new ones since our last contest, so I'm going to inquire to see if I can get inquire. some of them. Inquire. It's all business, right? Business. It's all professional. Uh, let's see. Pella says, is Fax the only European convention conference you guys are going to visit? This year, yes, but we're yeah. hoping to do more next year. Like, if Fax goes well, mm-hmm. that will definitely want make us want to come back. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like an excuse to travel, really. Right. I, I don't think I've ever been to Europe except for when I was born. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. oh, and then we're going to Iceland, risk. which we're pretty excited about that, too. Oh, yes. Iceland. Um, Bowen says for some reason my brain was making a more formal suit gang, but good to know. Oh, dude, what if it was like mobster? It could be with masks. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. What we'll is brainstorm on it? Oh, brainstorm. They could be like rough and tough, but like wearing like messed up suits or something. Muzzles. Like the boys? There you go, muzzles. You should all wear the muzzles. Boys, boys and girls. The girls would wear. Oh, I see what you mean. The girls would wear suits too. Mm-hmm. Muzzles. Yeah. They got muzzles. Did they? They got them. Oops, my dick. The suit heads. gang. <laughs> um, Tigel says head shears. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that is violent. That's murdery. That's extra murdery. We don't know if we want murdery or just like blunt weapons right now definitely like definitely is something more violent but don't think like chainsaw like right. if i if you can cut someone in half with the weapon probably not yeah they want they don't want instant kills <laughs> yeah it's like you you hurt them enough to let them know you mean business mm-hmm. that kind of a weapon. owen says switchblade yeah i was closer. suggesting daggers because i thought uh, Faith says, hey guys, I can't stay because we're, but I want to stay. Faith! Hey, Faith! Hi. I'm sorry you can't stay. But I hope work is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should switch. I'm doing so much that I'm not giving you any chance to explore. Alright, we'll do a switch. Wait, I'm drawing? We'll make a new... <laughs> yeah! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Okay, let's see where you were at. Uh, Sarath says brass knuckles with <laughs> spikes. I think you mean spikes. As they would be claws or the. Oh, that'd be cool. Imagine the brass knuckles, they were curved. Like actual claws, okay. you know? Oh, That's yeah. a great idea. Wait, oh, that could be their weapon. Oh, like freaking like claws. Green. Wait, wait, why are you going that direction? Oh, wait, I'm, wait, which way is the hand? Because it's like this. Oh, <laughs> That'd be, you're like trying to hit someone that way, but it's like just giving him a massage. 
Um, doo -doo -doo. John Miller says, last year I imagined them as a mafia gang, maybe spiked brass knuckles and big rings. You know what? Maybe. We, we should oh. play with the idea. Do you want to give her a tuxedo in the back instead of the jacket after you're done with that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? We're going to try that out. I, I actually really like that idea if they were all formal. That's a cool idea. And I think I was just going with the tattered and uh, kind of warrior look, just or warrior's look, just because of... It could be a tattered suit look. A li like a little tattered? I'm yeah. almost thinking, like, remember the crazy 88 from Kill Bill? But, yeah, like, making it really our own. Time. Well, they all, er, when they fought in that restaurant, they all had the suits... Uh-huh. You know what? We're going to give it a go. Why not? And I feel like this is the perfect way to show how art, you might go in with an idea, and then you come out with something different. Yeah. How do we draw suits? From the back? Yeah. I'll get my iPad and give you some reference. So okay. do the do the brass knuckles first. Okay. okay. And then here, I'll find a question where I'll have you answer it while I go get that. Do do do. Uh, Gypsy says, outsiders, reference, greasers were the poor kids. Socks were the rich kids, but they fought dirty. Uh, Chrissy says guns, or are you going to keep it clean? We're going to keep Wait, it clean. Are we doing brass knuckles, or are we doing yeah. like, rings and shit? Oh, well, imagine, Sorry. Sorry. Uh, like, little hook, like, like a claw, you know? Okay. Or would it be on their hand, or their fingers? Like, uh, who was the villain from Snow White and the Huntsman? Oh, he had those giant claws. She, but imagine if it was, like gloves that you wore that might be cooler oh, so do you want to like do one of these then and you like oh, show good. the claws here or something oh, yeah um do 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 Joposaur says a crowbar we were thinking of that too uh owen says maybe a razor blade chain it's also a good idea we definitely want to have a chain of some kind right um do -do -do. brass knuckles yeah, I'd, we definitely want to incorporate brass knuckles in some way. Brass knuckles and claws. They're just they're just like fists and hands, all hand to hand. Um. Okay, these are mostly suggestions here. How about do you want to talk about how you paint when you're doing something like this? Really quick. Oh boy, how do I paint? First of all, I struggle because I'm still learning Tim's keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of it is just kind of like, it feels a lot like sculpting when I'm doing this sort of process. I don't actually, like it's more about carving out forms and stuff out of these values rather than having details already set out for you. Mostly start with like a larger brush, but I have a habit of using small brushes. Um, I don't know, it's like picking away. I feel like Key definitely doesn't focus on details at all in like her beginning stages. She very much like lays out values and then she likes experimenting with color a lot <laughs> and throwing on different gradient maps. Yeah. It's been funny, I've been using my iPad more as like a reference board for when I'm drawing traditionally than actually using it for drawing. Are you gonna look up mm -hmm. soups? Cool. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Faithful says your guys' sweaters are amazing, they make me happy. <laughs> They make us happy, too. They keep us really warm. Ella says, I wasn't a member when the contest about the battered bunnies was happening, and I'm wondering if you don't mind telling us what it was about. Uh, yeah, and you know what? I could even throw a link when uh, I start painting again to the actual contest last year. Essentially, it was a gang that uses... It was a contest that you not only had to create your own character that would fit within the gang, I guess requirements and those included they had to have a bunny mask they had to have a bat of some kind and they had to incorporate 
the symbol, like the logo of the battered bunny somewhere on them. It could have been a tattoo, it could have been on the bat, it could have been a symbol, it could have been a, a patch that was sewn onto their clothing. As long as it was visible, it counted. And then... Oh, what did you just search? Oh, here, let me just do... Uh, but as long as you had those requirements, it could be pretty much anything of your creation. So with this one, we're going to have a very similar format, but the only difference is it's a different game. There are different requirements. Yes. I kind of like the idea of it being more clean, and then... What if it's lighter? A light tux? You could try that. Maybe their thing is like... Better bunnies always seems more bright colored or like dark. And it could just be more light or pastel or something crazy. I don't know. These are the kids from Uptown. Yup. Um, do to do. Cactus says, if you go with the suit look, they would keep their weapons and briefcases. <laughs> uh, Ella says, will the canines be like formal assassins? Um, think not so much like killing. Think like more of city gangs and how they uh, are portrayed. I know a lot of the times you only hear about like the actual murders of gang violence, but think of like also the nitty gritty that happens in between the big... Uh, killing so that's what we're shooting for more because I mean if they really wanted to kill each other they'd probably just use guns right this is more like I don't know how to describe it this is more of like an artistic I guess representation especially they probably wouldn't be wearing masks like anytime I see in movies or stuff where they're wearing a bunch of masks I'm always like or even when they're robbing banks I'm always looking at their eye holes and how easy it would be to see out of them because I I feel like there's a level of realism that gets lost when the eye holes are like really small or like the mask comes out really far so it's like your field of view are like these two pinholes I doubt you would be stealing anything or you'd have everyone you know in view while you're doing it awesome. but that could just be me watching movies maybe, it's just, maybe we're just trying to go for something more campy yeah that's true too this is more campy think of like the warriors or what's that game with uh, people black and white they have bats They're all in like baseball gear. Shoot, one of you guys I bet will know. Do -do -do. Uh, Faithful says, is it okay if we do a graphite drawing for the contest or will we get less points with judges? No, you can definitely do a graphite drawing. You can do whatever you want. You yeah. Uh, John Miller says, will there be a specific breeds of dogs involved for the gang, like Greyhounds and German Shepherds? I kind of want it to be up to interpretation. So however you would interpret a canine mask in a, a gang. Oh, we probably should make those ears a little taller, now that I'm looking at it. There you go. Thank you. Um, to do. Cactus says, maybe a chain with a sharpened bone at the end as a weapon, like a Kusari Kusarigama. That might work. We definitely like the idea of incorporating a chain. I mean, if we go more of the campy route, that would, we could do something like that, you know? Right. And I think I, I want to. Honestly, I feel like this is a fun concept, and to not utilize it would be a shame. Extra shameful. John Miller says, have you found a good stylus for your iPad? Uh, yes, it was the the pen, eye pencil or whatever Apple calls their pencil that comes with it. I, I actually really enjoy it. Owen says, would you say the gang does the infamous gang cheek smile slash? Um, if you want yours to. <laughs> I feel like each character would probably do their violence in their own way. Every criminal is an artist. Just like every uh, subway employee is a sandwich artist. They're always different. Uh, Faithful says, maybe they wear suits, but they are patched together since they are more physically violent. Oh, maybe. Ooh, patchy shoots. I do think we might have to get rid of the canine thing altogether, though. And I would keep it more like that. Mm -hmm. If you want, I can do the suit, if that bores you. <laughs> wow, Tim. 
Why would you have fun while painting? I don't mind doing the meticulous stuff. I'm just gonna do it in spite. <laughs> okay, that worked. <laughs> like, I secretly like really didn't want to do it. Like, oh, I know it will make her do it. No, I'll just do. Uh, Tichel says, "Please remove the mask. We need to see your lips." <laughs> I would like to keep it on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Altered Mage says, Wolf can be an interesting using clothes that try to blend in with bunnies, but still something off so you can tell without the mask. A clean punk look could be interesting. Yeah, I think that's what we're going for, like a clean punk. Christy McAbee says, Bone handles? As the weapon? Yeah. Bone handles. Altered Mage says, Like name brand shiny shoes or purse, etc. Oh yeah, I mean we could really parry it up. Like they all have Coach and Gucci and oh, Louis Vuittons. Gucci. I like that though. Aquinas says, I, "Sorry, I missed the beginning. What is the topic of the contest?" So essentially, the oh yeah, don't move it too far up, or else I can't see the top of the image here. There you go. That's okay. That's okay. Um, the topic of the what we're doing today in the contest is the gang, the canines. Essentially, it's a fictional gang that is opposing rivals to the Battered Bunnies, which was a contest we had last year. And we finally got around to doing a contest for the canines. And the idea is, so far what we've come up with, which I think will be the guidelines, is it has to include... A canine mask, and I think it's a canine of your choice. If you want to do a wolf, if you want to do a dog, like it might even be funny to have like a bull mask, bulldog mask for one of them, as long as it represents a canine in some way. The I think it has to have a suit and tie, so something a little more fancy, and then whatever we decide on the weapon, which I believe will probably be something incorporating either chains and the uh, uh, iron knuckles that are claws. So like maybe a glove with claws, not so much Freddy Krueger think more of, I can't think of her name from Snow White and the Huntsman, but she had those little claw hooks that when she was like eating the heart of the raven. I want to say her name was Verona for Vienna or something. I can't remember the names from that. But I like the idea of them having claws to just go with the theme of canine. Uh, Faithful says they could have a rabbit's foot as a good luck charm. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I like that. Good call, Faith. Uh, Owen says, do foxes count? Sure. Yeah. Why not? <coughs> foxes want to be dogs. <laughs> <laughs> They're dogs in training. Uh, Joe Pasor says, do you have any tips on how to draw all those details you put into your traditional work? I use the same 0.2 millimeter pencil you use, but I don't understand how you make it so clean looking and put so much details in the speed you work at. Also, I like the digital streams a lot, but do you have a traditional stream plan? I plan to actually do a lot more traditional streams on my uh, Von Art Twitch channel. So if you want to see me do more traditional stuff, I'll be doing more casual ones on there. Mostly, probably, like, swordplay drawings, but uh, I can definitely do more traditional streams. And I have fun doing them. So, yeah. I think in terms of your question, though, what I like to do is I usually do a soft outline for what I know, and then like it helps me contain everything. So if I don't know what concept I'm going to do, I'll do make a really rough, make it loose and fluid, blah, 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 and then I'll darken the best edge for each area. But admittedly, a lot of times when I go into drawing, I'll just like start with an outline and I'll, I'll keep with it. And then when I'm shading, I either do, I first do like a cross hatching, so I'll do like simple short strokes. And then if I want it to be more blended, less of the pencil stroke be seen, I'll like angle my second stroke so it just blends it and the white in between the graphite marks will be blended in. And then what people don't realize is when I do those finer details, I actually work in small circles. And sometimes you'll notice it with my work, but that's how I get the small details. And when I want to do a really clean gradient from one value to another, I always do uh, small circles. Uh, John Miller says, oh, does that mean we could do jackals too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. I'm sure there would be like 
some discussion within the gang members of why do you have that mask? That's not even a canine. But then the, I'm sure that person would be like, oh, you just don't understand me. <laughs> Uh, Sarath says, is there going to be a third gang, so perhaps a three-way rivalry? I've thought about that, and essentially these gang members are from, well, at least the Battered Bunnies were originally from Swordplay, which is my illustrated novel, and then the idea of there being more games made sense to me. The third, the gang that Nate is actually from, or originally from, he was from the Sewer Rats, so it was like the gang that lives underneath the city, and they believe they ran it just from underneath, and that was always a gang I wanted to do, but this one made more sense for the contest and I think for being more of a rival to a bunny gang, I think having something more canine made sense. So, ah, Ravenna, that is the person. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. I could not think of that name. All right, switch. That's 20. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <hate me. laughs> Alright, where are we at? Uh, I'm, no, I'm good. I oh, got all the way. cleaned everything. Wow. Nope. Yeah, right. Jay says, does it have to be a full mask? No, I don't think so. Full mask? No. No. Yeah, if you wanted like a masquerade mask, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be fine. But do they have to have a mask? Good question. I want. I actually want to say no. Like if they had a tattoo of mm -hmm. a canine on their face. Mm -hmm. Like when I did the, because I wasn't actually a judge or anything for the battered bunnies when I designed mine. Um, I did give them masks, but I didn't actually cover their face. So I mean, like they just kind of wore it as an accessory. So anything, I guess, as long as it's still related to a dog, it's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, Ella says, so I'm thinking more formal clothing, suits or long coats, but still make the gang read imposing, not so much horrifying, and more muted color scheme. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, because remember, you guys can interpret it however you want. Right. Like, we're only going to give you, like, a few limitations, mm -hmm. and then you take your creativity and run with it. Yeah, we don't want you to feel limited with the, um, designs. You want you want freedom to just kind of just go with whatever you want. Plus, it's kind of fun to see how far you guys can like stretch concepts. Mm, that exactly. Mm -hmm. That's when you can kind of see who might make a better concept artist than another. Because some artists might think more on like surface level of thinking; they're not digging too deep. And then another artist might go like super extreme, and they're thinking of how to like incorporate canine and yeah. Right stretching it as far as possible rather than just kind of just going with the first idea that mm -hmm. pops into your mind. <laughs> uh, Chris says, this may be too gruesome, but what if they have canine companions and if they died, they would incorporate their bones into their masks? No. Oh. No, well, I like the idea. I of, like, like that idea. Imagine if after they kill someone, they bring in the dogs to finish the deed. Yeah. To eat them. Or do dogs eat what? Would a dog eat human meat? I think so. Like if it was really ravenous? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait, you don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> no. Uh, Sorry guys, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I am not, says, I haven't read the descriptions and just got home. But what is your definition of a gang? How much is that set as the modern interpretation of the word? I know, I was thinking about that too, because like, the reason the Warriors made sense when that movie was made, because it was in like the 70s, I believe, or 80s, right. and we didn't have technology like we do today, so there, I feel like there's a security cameras on every corner of a busy city, so like gangs can't get away with things that they used to, and I think all these like fun concepts of wearing masks and having things that let you know they're associated with a gang, you don't see that much anymore right. either. So this is definitely more of a campy take on it, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be, like, true life, true to life or whatever. It's just supposed to be more, like, I'd say, like, Kill Bill. Kill Bill was, like, fun and over the top. Mm -hmm. You didn't like my shoulder cut to make it more, like, juicy? I just want it to look like. Oh. Okay. Because these things are thick. There's usually, like, shoulder pads in them. But I never wear those. Oh, that's what's <laughs> 
Uh, Lula says, I'm really confused. I missed the beginning, so I have no idea what the topic actually is. <laughs> so essentially, this is for a contest that is going to be releasing soon. Oh, it's here. Oh. And it is for... We do so essentially we do contests every season on CG Cookie and this one is supposed to be the summer one. It's been delayed just because the new site came out and we were just testing things on the back end making sure it would work. Mm -hmm. And now we're finally at that point where it's pretty much ready. So we're creating all the marketing and fun stuff for it. And this is the banner. So essentially this is gonna be the rival gang of Battered Bunnies, which was a contest we did a couple or last year, last spring actually. And yeah, I guess more rules and more info will be out when the actual contest launches. So if you kind of feel in the dark or if you're not fully sure of what you're supposed to draw, that's okay. If the contest has not started yet. I don't want to give you guys, I don't want to like scare you and being like, oh, by the way, you have a week. <laughs> I'll definitely give you enough uh, time to create your own. Sure. And I should note the prizes are doubled. So if you knew what the prizes were before, they're all doubled. So this is actually the biggest contest we've ever had on CG Cookie. Oh, Owen <laughs> says they probably would. I was trying to figure out what that meant, as I guess it has to do with dogs eating people, especially if they're starving, what Zane says. Uh, Ellie says, is there a place to see past entries for the Battered Bunnies contest? Yes. Oh, you know what? That's what I was supposed to do first. Did you find another question while I find this? It take me like sure. a second. Joe says, if I want to enter, how do I do that? And does it matter what animal mask he, she wears? Um, it just has to be dog, I think. Dog related in some respect. Yeah, anything canine. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, I found it, guys. So there's a link to it if you want to see the final submissions mm -hmm. from last year. There were a lot of really cool ones, so for that's sure. great inspiration for how to treat this one. Altered Mage says, is this a concept for one gang member or for many? That's up to you. Mm -hmm. We And if you look at the Battered Bunnies contest, some people submitted three, some had like a whole gang. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, Jensen did, I think, seven in one picture. It was something crazy. So yeah, uh, however many as you want. The thing I would say though, is if you're gonna do a lot, be sure to give each the attention it deserves. Right. Because sometimes you can get lost with having just too many and it just can look like clutter. You don't want it to look like that. Put a lot of attention to one before making another one, I assume. It's like quality over quantity. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, Ella says, how can you not watch Game of Thrones? I'm disappointed at you, Tim, and I'm feeling sorry for you. <laughs> like, you've missed so much. Uh, it was actually a couple seasons ago, and my friends kind of know, I'm, I watch a lot of movies, and I think I'm very critical. Actually, I hate how that looks. And I think with Game of Thrones, I felt like it was falling into a lot of tropes that I, I personally don't like. And it's hard for me to watch it when all I feel I'm doing is critiquing it in the back of my mind, so I wasn't immersed anymore. And I feel like my favorite characters were already dead anyways. So for me to still feel something and a connection with the characters that are still alive, it just, it wasn't there. And honestly, I wasn't feeling inspired anymore from it. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. But I still like the first two seasons. I thought they were great. So I, I don't like bad mouthing Game of Thrones because I, I did have a good time with them. Gabby says, do you have any tips on improving faster? Draw every day and do it with a critical eye. Make sure you're actually learning because when you're just, when you study, it's easy to just try to memorize it, but it's better to try to understand why things are the way they are rather than just saying this is this. Mm -hmm. The best example is like when doing anatomy studies. In college, yeah, I did a, I drew a bunch of muscles and did that for my entire class, but did I learn anything from it? No, I was just photocopying what I saw and then like a vocab quiz in high school, you forget it as soon as it's over. And that's something that mm -hmm. now that I'm older and I'm studying in anatomy, I'm really understanding how it works, how it functions, where it's placed on the bone. And once you have more of an interest in it, I feel like it becomes easier to actually learn it. Where are we at? 
Tim bringing back their shoulder pants. <laughs> <laughs> John says, so do you know if the Halloween costume will be on time? Is there a Halloween costume? Contest? Oh, Halloween contest. Yes. The Halloween contest will still happen in October. Okay. And I mean, there's going to be a lot happening in October, let me tell you. A lot. Yeah. I guess we can just do a quick note. If anyone wants to, for the entire month of October, Key and I are running a calendar challenge, which probably a lot of you have seen, not only with Inktober, but this year I feel like they got really popular, like they gained traction. You saw it with Mermay and all the other summer ones, and then uh, the Childhood Week from Beatrice Blue. So we are starting our own this October with Drawtober. And essentially every day we have a new prompt, and if you do all 31, we will send you a pin. Special surprise. Sarah says, I already have a bunch of ideas I want to explore for the contest. Hype. Awesome. Sharva says, so they will just be humans with masks on, not animalistic, like have fangs or canine eyes and stuff like that. You can um, give them contacts. Yeah, you can give them contacts. I think just people should be able to just kind of explore whatever they want. If you want to be more guys. feral, yeah. Yeah. It could be werewolves. Or it could be werewolves. I do think you then are kind of taking the concept... Like, you are stretching it really thin. So you want to be careful, because if you're a concept artist at a game studio, the whole point we even started these contests were to be like, you are a concept artist working at a studio, and you're given this assignment. Interpret it however you want and have mm -hmm. fun with it. But it's supposed to help you improve to create a piece that you could put into your portfolio, mm -hmm. something that can showcase your skills of like interpreting and using your creativity. So if you do a werewolf, I feel like you would miss the mark a little bit, honestly. Because we do, you do want it to just be humans then. Kind of just like an alt universe that isn't so magical, but rather there's... Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you want to interpret it that way, like I'm not the only one judging. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to cater yours to the way I'm probably going to judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's other judges, so... Don't worry about what Tim thinks. Yeah. <laughs> worry about what Key thinks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, to do, I am not says, are blue whales considered canine? I don't think so. No. That's actually the first no we're going to say on the screen. I, just, I don't have an opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Chibi says, do canines have a hat out? Uh, what does it look like? I think that's something you could try to figure out. And interpret. Mm-hmm. Zane says, I have to go to a fancy adult meeting, but good luck for the rest of the stream. This will be the last one I can go to for a while since classes start next week, and I have Wednesday classes during this time. I hope the live stream goes well. No. Well, thank you, Zane, for coming to them. Have fun in school, and best of luck. Yes. Learn all the things. I mean, if you'd ever want to just watch them on YouTube, you can always watch them. I post them on Monday now, the week after. Mm -hmm. So that's my plan with continuing to do these. Owen says, are you going to make a playlist for the gang like you did for the last Battered Bunnies contest? You bet. You betcha. Uh, Sarah says, you're going to make me very busy with all these challenges in October. Looking <laughs> forward to it. Trust me, we're feeling it too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because we have to do a lot of, like, promo stuff, which, I mean, we were anticipating, but it's not the most fun. But you got to do it, you know? If you want to do it right, do it right. A whole lot of right to do. <laughs> Bun Bun says, can we do multiple entries? Yep. Yes. Can you do multiple entries? It doesn't have to be digital. I'm trying to think of what other questions I normally get. Uh, it could either be concept piece or an illustration. Um, that's usually the big ones. Yes, you can have multiple people in the same image. You can have multiple entries. The only thing you can't do is you can't have a copyrighted character, so mm -hmm. don't include any woof that would be... Uh, don't include Wiley Coyote or something. Yeah, exactly. She needs a split in her head where the hair would be pulled. Oh, yeah. I was thinking you're just like <laughs> giving her an undercut. <laughs> 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 uh, Henry just subscribed with a five dollar sub. Subscribe for seven months in a <gasps> row. Oh, oh, that means you get the golden uh, 
I'm not even wearing it today, Tim. It's like over there somewhere. You, my friend, get a golden fridge pin. Wait, I think I saw it. Do you? So for anyone who doesn't know, if you subscribe to this channel for six months, I will send you a golden fridge pin. If you don't know what the golden fridge pin is, it's basically an inside joke. And I guess one day they're going to have to figure it out. Ooh, secrets. <laughs> secrets. 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 Not that it's really that big of a secret. Yeah, I thought I saw it like really recently. I like held it in my hand. Well. I'll go get one when it's my turn. Or they might be in here, actually. Oh. Bam. Mm. This is going to be yours. <laughs> here we can switch. Oh. I'm going to try to make her hair look a little more, like, a little ratty, not super clean. Mm-hmm. But we're also going to have to tackle that chain, which won't be fun. I need to take off this sweater. This is killing me. Tim's being killed. I'm being killed. Um, fully rendered background expected. Nope. You could just honestly do a character sheet if you really wanted to. I'm flipping. I feel like the head needs to move. A little bit. Because the neck. Yeah, you could do that. But they're on different layers. That's okay. Um, da, 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 da. Ian Green says, is that a paid subscription? Well, it's the Twitch subscription, yeah. And I'm thinking then, when I start doing these more on my channel, I'm going to have some of my own to give away. I want to have extra little goodies for you guys. Chrissy says, this gang oddly reminds me of Mordecai from Lackadaisy. I actually never saw Lackadaisy, did you? Wait, is that the comic? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'd, have you read it? Yes. Oh, is it good? Yes. It's good. It's... Are, is Mordecai from Lackadaisy that cat? I'm pretty sure. They're talking about the cat comic? But yes. Yeah, she I says do. the comic, yes. Okay, cool. Um, I am not says, Tijel says they have to wear suits. Is that a rule? Uh, formal wear, formal attire, essentially. Suits would probably be the most preferred, but they don't have these suits. So, I mean, if you wanted, because I feel like when I say formal Where's attire. The normal loop tool? It's that one. You oh. got it. Oh, cool. I was like, what are you doing? I don't know. It's Funny. I still don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna move the head. Don't worry about it, see? Different styles, am I right? Um, so yeah, if you wanted to have your a girl wearing a suit, that'd be fine. I mean, I guess you could have a guy wearing a dress. But essentially, it has to be formal attire, and it has to have more of a clean overall look to it versus the battered bunnies, which was super textured and rough and gritty. But that's not to say that you can't throw some grit onto this character too, because I feel like this world calls for it a little bit. Tim, how do you control, how do you copy everything? I don't know, I've never done that. Oh. That's why I was like, what are you doing? Oh. I always merge everything together, treat it like a painting. How do you get rid of the transform? No, I wanted everything slided. Oh, never mind. Uh, I think I can take it out. There we go. Tishel says, you'll do your own pins. Will it be a golden pig? <laughs> yeah, I think the ones that I'll do on my stream, I'll, I'll have them for sale as well. And I think just for Twitch subscribers, if you pay, or if you subscribe for a certain amount of time, if it's worth the cost of the, actually just buying the pin, I'll just send you the pin. So the pins that I want to do, I definitely want to do a golden shovel. I think it is just one of those things of like reminding to dig a little deeper for you guys. If you were there for the stream where we talked about that, I do want to do a golden pig. I already have it pretty much drawn out. Uh, you know, there's a few others I want to do. I want to do uh, uh, some swordplay ones too. 
shortly. Uh, John Miller says, Wiki says, family canine or candidate includes domestic dogs, wolves, coyotes, foxes, foxes, oh, dingoes, dingo would be cool, jackals, tanuki, dole, and African wild dogs. Well, thank you. So if you guys just heard that, if one of those like inspires you when you just heard the name. What about hyenas? I think hyenas would count. Hmm. We'll, we'll let that one slide and we'll give it a freebie, right? Yeah. Okay, Debonation says, Sorry, maybe it's a bit off topic, but recently I've been going through a strange thing with my art. I was learning the fundamentals from last few months, but now when I tried to make a finished piece, I failed to do so because it feels like I lost that patience I had earlier. I try to rush every time I start a piece. Did this ever happen to you? I really don't know why it's happening to me, yet I draw every day. Any solutions? You might be going through a little bit of a burnout. Uh, Lois just talked about this on her Twitter. She reposted something that really explained it well, how you can't just be pushing so hard where mentally you're not giving yourself enough time to like refill up your creativity and get inspired from new movies or even games. Even though I don't recommend playing that much video games, I do think it it A does help. balance would be good, I think. I agree. And I think it can help your visual library grow. So if you're like head down and you're always working you're not giving yourself enough of a mental break and that's why then every time you start a new piece you're like i'm drawing so much why can't i do this faster why can't i just produce something great every mm -hmm. single time it's also intimidating just thinking about how much work starting a new piece is going to be and mm -hmm. i think really all it is is you just gotta work on it anyway because in the end you're gonna have a cool finished piece and that's kind of the main thing yeah, and I think one of the things I've had to tell myself, even with starting a bigger piece, is it will be worth it, but you can't get an instant gratification like you do on your pencil drawings. Right. Because I can finish a pencil drawing in a night usually, and yeah, I'll post it, I'll feel good about it, and the next morning I can do something new. But usually with a big illustration piece, it's there's many days that are involved, and you every time you work on it, sometimes you're like, man, I just put six hours into this, but it barely changed, or I had to redo this entire area. So it can be frustrating, and yeah, we can definitely relate. It's worth it, though. So put in that time and effort, and it will be worth it for you. Can I zoom in? No. Oh. I, yeah, no, I'm kidding. Wow. Uh, if you want, here, why don't we change, because right now the texture is, like, super intense. Super big, yeah. We'll do that, and then... Or just go to the texture thing. The texture, make the texture smaller. Take the off. Do you want just a little texture on it? Yeah. But, uh, scale it down. Scale. Well, we want scale to be the same so that the... Well, I guess we can turn it down. But sometimes it makes the canvas then look like two different canvases, you know? This Either way. Digital. It's fine. Uh, oh, Altered Mage. That's a great way to put it. She, uh, they say, breathe in, breathe out. You can't just exhale all the time. It's a great way to put it. Uh, Domination says, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And honestly, like, that's what, well, one, that's why we even do these streams, just to help you guys with any questions or concerns like that. But I feel like this is something that, as a younger artist, or when I was a younger artist, I always believed that I would get to a point where everything would be easier. And I feel like actually the opposite has happened. And I don't want this to discourage anyone or, like, make anyone feel more stressed. But it would be a lie if I was like, yeah, it'll get easier and blah, blah, blah. It becomes harder, but you learn how to manage it. And not only that, you start to see the success of putting more time and effort into it. And what was that thing you said about having a knife to your throat? That comic that you were reading? That was a great explanation. Oh, of it. yeah. Where it's like, uh, when you first start, um, there's, there's only a little bit of pressure. So it's like a little weapon at your throat a little like i don't know nothing too scary and then like the more success you have the more pressure to be more successful after that so like the more successful you get the more pressure and thus like a bigger weapon is going to be at your throat every time you're kind of successful and you're always expecting that first weapon yeah uh ella says 
Is it okay to create your own canine? Something more on the sci-fi fantasy direction, but still dog-like? Yeah. I, if you're thinking of... Oh man, there's so many people on Instagram I follow, and there's one that just makes these helmets that kind of look like canine. I wouldn't be able to tell you what their name is. But yeah, if it took a little bit more of a sci-fi approach, that's okay. Yeah. I definitely think it would probably benefit you to stick more in a campy fantasy world. I think that just more... If we're going to go off of what Battered Bunnies was last year and seeing the entries from that, I think you can get inspired in the look and feel of the world that they live in. Uh, Jopasaur says, If you draw every day, sort of mindless, is that a way to get better in combination with studies of muscles and stuff? Uh, I don't think mindlessly drawing is a really good way to draw. No. Because you want to be, while you're drawing, knowing what you're doing and then when you're trying something new while you're drawing you want to be aware of that you're doing something different and um, sometimes it's good to just be really loose with your drawings to just kind of let your hand be loose but when you're doing that you're still aware that you're that's what you're doing so mm -hmm. there's a lot of control involved when it comes to learning and not just kind of hoping for the best but I mean that's really that's a hard question <laughs> yeah I, you should be drawing every day the thing that I always see more novice artists doing is they're just reproducing the same level of quality over a long period of time and they don't realize that they're not gaining followers or they're not gaining more traction is because their quality isn't improving they're doing what we talked about on the stream with plateauing and every artist goes through phases of getting better, the growing, and then they plateau. But unfortunately, sometimes that plateau is usually at a down angle, just by like a hair, like a slight three degree angle, and it's going down. So unless if you continue to shoot up and try to better yourself, the quality won't increase either. So yeah, you wanna be drawing every day, but you wanna draw with some kind of intent or purpose, because otherwise then you're just reproducing essentially the same drawing, just in mm -hmm. a different subject matter right and like it's not to say that we're exceptions i get caught in that <laughs> trap all the time and it's something where even with my digital art the best example is i got so fresh with digital i kind of just cut it out completely and it wasn't until i pushed myself to really try new brushes and do new techniques that i started to recognize what i like in digital painting versus what i used to think i like and yeah it's frustrating and that's why they're called growing pains you know and yeah, it's better to expect them than rather to then just blow them off and be like, well, I hit a roadblock, I hit an art block, everything needs to stop. And I feel like sometimes we hit roadblocks or art blocks and we're just like, I, I don't want to draw. But instead, the challenge is to find out why you're having that roadblock and then overcoming it. Sometimes it is, you're just exhausted. Like, I love the thing of breathe in, breathe out. Yeah, maybe you've just literally exhausted yourself by only breathing out right. take a moment for yourself to breathe in go look at some new or go watch some new movies go outside go in nature i feel like walking around being outside helps dramatically at least for me and then then go back at it but if it's not that problem if this is a problem of you came across one snag in your piece that you can't that you're like oh man mm -hmm. now everything's thrown off and it's like you you give up too easily so to try to recognize which one you're going down and if you know which one it is then do the solution that best fits the yeah. scenario i think a lot of art blocks happen when you draw just some things that aren't satisfying to you so you just feel it then you just kind of just give your excuse that oh it's just you know an art block or oh, some yes. sort of rumbly yeah. tumbly thing but it's really just you just got to keep trying before you make a piece where you can be happy um, LSQ says how long did you and Key practice anatomy and gesture drawings before you felt comfortable drawing them more regularly and easily uh, I mean we still pretty much draw <laughs> I, was say, I still things. am learning things about yeah. anatomy I mean it's always going to be a learning process it's just the more you learn the more um, your art's going to look correct exactly but, like it's I mean, we're not always going to be correct with our anatomy. That's, like, impossible. It's just about um, 
I would say developing like a critical eye for anatomy though and being able oh, yeah. to pick at it until it you're satisfied with it and then you become more comfortable with it to a point where you go into a piece and you can attack certain areas so like for me I love attacking the collarbone hands uh, usually an ear like there's certain features that I feel like I have drawn enough times or I've really studied or looked at and I know how to draw it or at least to the best of my ability and there's always things that you can improve on but those I feel really confident in and I try to showcase those in my drawings so the what you guys can do is if you and I, I'm, I'm mentoring someone right now and I am drilling into him that draw hands if you can get good at drawing hands one it'll make understanding how to draw the rest of the body so much easier mm -hmm. because these hands not only can they be put in so many different positions but there are thick areas there are thin you can contort it and there are so much underlying anatomy and bone structure that is visible these are complicated little digits and if you can master drawing hands not only will you feel like you'll be more comfortable drawing them but all of a sudden your pieces go from hiding them in the pocket and behind the back or like having them on not be visible like cross arms i, I think, know all the tricks i think having really good looking hands can really make a piece like either it'll just make the piece way better yeah if you can draw nice hands it's like the easiest way to impress someone that doesn't do art regularly i i think my even with my parents that's they're totally not artists the goal. yes <laughs> 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 not that that should be the goal <laughs> But I do recognize realism is impressive to people that don't do art. But in the art community, hands are impressive because not a lot of people focus on hands or they try to hide them because they are difficult to draw. And the sooner that you become more comfortable with them, I promise, at least in that aspect of your work, it'll make it easier than doing the other parts of the body because they're more or less simplified or larger versions of what you've already learned with the hand. Ooh, okay, we got a lot of questions. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Uh, Haha, <laughs> little joker says, would it be okay to submit like a mini comic for the contest? Oh, dude, yeah. Hell yeah. Sure. <laughs> or just conceptual art more preferred. No, I think a comic would be great. We had actually a couple enter before. I, I believe two years ago, one of the, uh, I want to say it was a two panel comic. It actually won one of the top places. So yeah, a comic can actually do well. I, I wouldn't make it like a 50 page comic no. I mean I guess you might win but <laughs> I mean that's really ambitious and I think it should be more conceptual as long as you keep the quality up there that's really all that matters don't sacrifice again quantity exactly. over your quantity and that's why there's a deadline that's shorter so that it kind of pushes you and it's not going to be like a 60 page uh, spread Cactus says, I'm drawing, so that's why I'm not typing, but I'm still listening. Oh, well, that works. Actually, I kind of like when we do these more casual streams. I want you guys to draw alongside us. Yeah. So it's like, not only can you answer a question every now and then, but you can watch us paint while you're painting at the same time. It's, you know, it's inspiring. It's just like hanging out. Yeah, it's like, we're, we're just hanging out. We're just chums. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, to do. J Hart says, I started to make my own manga and comic book. I find that all the time and energy goes to the comic and anytime I try to work on a personal piece or a small drawing, I feel like it should be I should be working on a comic and not a drawing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I feel ya. Yeah. My Instagram has suffered because of this and I haven't posted in two weeks. How do you find the balance between personal work and work work? Well, I guess right now for me, it's like CG cookies during the day, my personals at the night, conventions on the weekend. And that's just how I've kind of dedicated my time. But in terms, of, I totally relate with you with having your own personal book that you want to do. But then all of a sudden a simple drawing idea comes to mind and you're like, mm -hmm. I have to get that out first. Yeah. And that it's, happens to me constantly. It's, it's hard because for me, I really like right now just drawing kind of what feels good at the moment because it's what's most inspiring to me mm -hmm. um but i feel like at some point you'll be able to figure out how to like connect maybe things that you feel with your main project that you'll want to do at some point i still think though you should make a goal for yourself especially with social media i mean we call it playing the game but i think there's some level of accountability where you're posting at least once a week if that's like the schedule you want to hit i tr i try to hit or no i i do i hit one a week and i usually shoot for two or three 
I think that's just because you want your page to be active. You want it to be constantly flooded with new people. So exposing it with new images helps. Now that's not to say you should just post randomly and wildly if you're doing work that you're not proud of. You wanna post stuff that you are proud of. And you know, if it's gonna be a bigger piece, post it in progress shot. It doesn't like it only has to be final illustrations. Is it 20 minutes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been working on this thing for a while. Do you want to answer that then? Oh, what one? Um, how do you balance? How to balance like personal personal work and work with like your social media, oh, like making sure that your social media. Uh, <laughs> that's really hard because I feel like even I struggle with that, and I'm still trying to figure out how to balance it. Um, that's just about managing time, really. It's something that I struggle so much with, is managing my time and trying to focus on one thing at a time. Like, I easily get very overwhelmed with having so many things to do at a time that I'll end up just napping or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, or just sleep, I sleep in because I'm just overwhelmed with how much stuff I have to do in a day. But with plastic bag uh it's just about focus mostly focus on what you got to do now and don't worry about what you got to do later because you can do that after you get at least one thing done so oh <sighs> yeah okay uh i am not says will they have a themed weapon like the bunnies or will they have some other unifying aspect yeah so earlier in the stream we were talking about that we're thinking Something either with chains, a bone, and claws of some sort. Yeah. I really liked femur bones or something. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a cute. It's, it's definitely more on the campy right, side, but that's what we're campy. going for. But also, chains are super cool. It makes sense with dogs. Mm -hmm. um, Alter Mage says, I took a reference photo of myself so I could draw the hands properly in a piece since I normally avoid them. A lot of less. A lot less daunting and can make sure I get the right pose. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you can just, we have hands, so use them for references because sometimes, like every time I draw a hand, I pretty much learn something new just because of how freaking complicated they are. So it's definitely great to use um, different references, especially your own. Um, Neil Suna says, what you can, oh, sorry, uh, what you can talk about art styles and about artists that draws, paints in an anime style. Um, uh, oh, there's a million different styles, so I don't know. It's, what is the question? I, I don't really understand the question. Where is it? Right here. What? what you can talk about art styles and about artists that draws, paint in an anime style. Oh, it's because there's a misconception, and I've, I've seen this all the time with, apparently, art teachers at universities and at art colleges disapprove of artists that draw anime. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a great video on what they're yeah, trying to say. I think we watched something like that before. Oh, it's basically, mm -hmm. um, is it about like just drawing something that already exists or something? I'd have to find the video. I can even post I it know on. it was really good. <laughs> it was really good. And it's, they're trying to say they're not insulting you or trying to belittle the right. fact that you draw anime. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you don't understand that those anime artists that are creating it, they have a great understanding of anatomy, of value, right. shading, and lighting. So then they are using that information to create their own style, and they're right. doing it in an animated style. The thing that you don't understand yet is value, shading, lighting, and all that stuff. So your teachers want you to learn that first, and then apply it to your anime. And they're not trying to discourage anime drawing. They right. just think that you should also... They're trying to encourage the fundamentals. Right. They just want you to know what you need to know before you can really just kind of just go off and do a style. Um, yeah. Um, Joe says, I think I'm looking at other artists like you and Key, and it is sort of motivating t to uh, me to get drawing, but when I start, I feel disappointed in what I drew, and I don't even finish it. I think I am comparing myself too much with other artists. Art block? How do I overcome that? Uh, it's really easy to be intimidating by other artists, especially with when you know you could be drawing better, but at the current moment you can't. Um, 
but I think the best thing to do is just keep working and teaching yourself and don't really focus too much on what other artists are doing focus on what you're doing I know it's like a like I say this a lot but it's better to compare yourself to yourself and not to others because everyone else is doing their own thing and they're growing their own way and um, when you're only when you're only um, comparing yourself to others um, you're not potentially seeing the growth that you've seen in yourself over the years so yeah yeah it's true uh, Elise says, is there any chance of being successful with an art if you're going to college and art won't be a first priority? I feel like I'm going to lose a lot of my art skills I've developed. I think it's very, <laughs> no. very possible. <laughs> what? No. What? You take like immediately different stances. <laughs> well, you say yours first. I think, I mean, it really depends on what your priorities are. If you're going to college for one thing and art's your priority, as long as you come back home after working on that exactly. degree and you're just working on art, then yes. Um, art is all about, you know, anything that you're interested in doing, as long as you have the passion for it, you can make it work. So uh, That's exactly what I was going to say. I was like, if you're passionate about it, it will happen. Yeah. And if it is just a hobby for you, that's not a bad thing. People yeah. that are hobby artists can still be really successful. So Yeah. And yeah, there's probably arts that will be better than you because they're treating it more seriously. They're studying, right. they have the time to dedicate to it. So don't get jealous, mm -hmm. but instead understand that you chose to follow your first passion. So the other passions kind of have to take a back burner, almost like a back seat to your first passion. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you can indulge in them every now and then. Like I really like playing piano, but I rarely do it. So obviously someone whose first passion is piano, they'll be way better than I will be. That's all I had. Cool. <laughs> I am not says, which is your favorite game? Ever? Ever? Or like, between the two? This oh, one. between the two. I don't um, know. I, don't I, know. I feel like this one's not know. developed enough yet for me to have a choice. I mean, I love the Battered Bunnies. I feel like... Why can't we just love all of them? <laughs> Why can't we make us choose? <laughs> yeah, well, ask me this after the contest is over, because then I'll feel like I can see how everyone interpreted it and be like, oh, that's really cool, and I like how people saw this one versus the last one. Oh, I like this accidental, accidental shadow that the ponytails are casting on the head. Oh, yeah. I like that. Cool dog. <laughs> cool dog. Cool dog. <laughs> hmm. uh, Tiny Rabbit says, how often should you be drawing to see real and consistent improvement? I mean, as much as you can. There is no objective answer to that. That would be, you have to draw this minimum amount of hours every single day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's no saying that, I like, the more yeah. hours you put in, you'll be... Well, it, like, people could be drawing every single day and not seeing improvement. That's true. Um, I think it's not about time. It's about what you're doing in that time. Because yes. if you're just drawing the same thing over and over, you're probably not going to see any improvement because you're just kind of coasting on something you already know how to draw rather than trying to explore further beyond your already bucket of knowledge. Put some more stuff in your bucket. Yeah. <laughs> Buckets. We're all out of questions. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How's your day, Keith? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's a bit, uh, it's great, I guess. Uh. <laughs> How was your day, Tim? I was, like, trying to manifest some kind of pause. I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Can't dang it, like, anything. nothing came out. Come on, Tim. I'm, like, disappointed in myself, uh. honestly. I... What? <laughs> Oh, Ashley wanted to share it. Look up the 10,000 hours rule. I thought it was 10,000 drawings. Well, it's in general, if you want to master anything, if you get out 10,000 drawings or do 10,000 hours of music or something, mm -hmm. you're eventually going to master it. And I do believe that for the most part. And yeah. spending time on one piece isn't going to make it better. No. Too much time. Just Too much time. But 10,000 hours is the, that saying. Yeah. And it's... 
I, how did I think my teacher told me it was you have to do ten thousand crappy drawings to start making good ones. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you better start pooping them out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, what am I doing? I'll do some more detailing. This Cactus handle. says, "Have you seen In a Heartbeat? What did you think?" Oh, I loved it. I was actually not to break. I was one of the first ones to see it because I followed him anyways. So I remember showing Key it and being like, "This is great!" Like Wait, I hope Pixar. It. it was with the the two boys and the heart that like breaks in half. It was an animated short. It's like four minutes. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. I hope more. Yeah, I, I loved it. Too. Like I hope it could get intention enough where then like a Pixar or a Disney could see that and maybe. Honestly, it's too bad Disney or Pixar didn't make that. I honestly think if they would take the plunge and be the right. first to make an LGBT type short, or even a full, imagine a feature film, they would, they would be remembered forever, right. as being the first to really be an advocate for that. So. But they're too worried about money. Perception money and perception. blah blah blah. Yeah. I I think eventually it'll happen. Yeah. It just they won't be the first. There's too much money involved, and for them, movies are not like an artistic expression. It's to make money, and movie business is Money's a business first. and i hate to admit it like i understand why some movies or why some companies do the things they do sometimes they'll make a movie that they know will do well so that they can fund more creative products mm -hmm. like frozen 2 disney knows they will make a bunch of money off of that so then the project after that will probably be a little more creative something more unique because they made so much money with the sequel that they can then use that money to help fund uh something more unique Or if Pixar just got their stuff together and would keep making original movies instead of all these sequels. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> like the Emoji Movie Cop Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, the. Oh, there are. Actually, I wasn't even that upset with the Emoji Movie, but. Did you see it? No. Oh. Well, how are you supposed to be upset or not upset if you haven't seen it? Because I found out, like, I follow a lot of game or er, film and movie critics, and they were saying how this movie is like a, a staple for when the movie industry turned. So apparently, this movie is like the movie to show that movies are just for money nowadays. And I kind of believe it a little bit. Yeah. Where I just read a thing where only 9% of movies that are released during a year are original ideas. So they're not sequels. They're not based off of a prop pre-established property and all that stuff. Property. And it's disappointing. Because I think, how can that encourage us as artists to want to create our own thing when it's like, the only way we'll get it made is if we have a lot of money. We make fan art all the time. Yeah. Guys, I'm really sad. Anyway, can we talk about something else? Yeah. <laughs> digital Frozen 2, seriously, that's the thing. I'm going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> no digital. Don't do it for Frozen 2. That's what they want. They want you to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need to get some of our detail brush going for our last half hour. Yeah. So I, I don't know how your brushes work, so I'm not so good with texturing. I think at 3.30... I'll give you it in like three minutes, and then we'll choose a different brush just meant for like Ooh. texturing. Just for texturing. Or sorry, just for details, I mean. Right. Do you think there'd be highlight around the mask, like shining onto the face because of bounce lighting? Mm hmm. And I was just trying to play with like a shadow here, but I don't know if I there like it. There could be a shadow there. and bounce lighting. There could be. Both. I'll let you deal with that. I'll do the ear. Yeah, do the ear. You love ears. Love ears. <laughs> He's really upset about that. Oh. oh, man, that's really... Palace says, Ed Hooks has a great theory about Pixar. When you start out, your risk is fairly small, so you have nothing to lose and are adventurous. But the more success money, the greater fear of risk. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's kind of, we, we, like, as artists, we depend so much on, like, indie movies and indie games so much because, like, these people always have way more ambition. Yeah, and, like, honestly, I and I don't want to mean to insult anyone. If you oh, like yeah. blockbuster movies or... I just, I cannot go to another superhero movie in the theater. 
I just feel like they're so formulaic and they're the same movie just presented with a different skin. And I get upset because that's what is that's fueling what the movie industry. So you're going to see even more movies that are like that. So then even those that like superhero movies, I have a lot of friends that love superhero mm -hmm. movies. Even they are feeling a little exhausted and they kind of want like a fresh take. And you get it every now and then. I feel like Deadpool last Deadpool. year, that was great. And I think you have to come at it with like a fresh uh, perspective or else mm -hmm. it's just going to be the same movie. And in like 10 years, boy. they'll get lost. They'll get just lost in the void of the 10 year span where superhero movies were everything and everywhere. Dude, we're living in the age of superhero movies. Yeah. Super. And Disney remakes, live actions. It's a dark time. <laughs> it's a really dark time. Uh, Owen says Hellblade was a good indie triple A mm -hmm. like game movie. Triple A, they said like game. I don't know. Was a good indie triple A like game? Oh, Hellblade, not Hellboy. Yeah. I never played Hellblade. Me either. I don't know. What we'll to look it's it good. up? Good. I'm gonna trust you. I'm just gonna be reading people's comments. Oh, yeah, yeah. Base. I was actually just thinking of that. Another thing to remember about Disney Pixar, they have huge staffs and facilities. Those people all have to earn a living. Mm -hmm. So if they take risks, that can mean hundreds of people lose their jobs if the material isn't successful. I've worked at studios that took risks, and it always ended in people losing their jobs because you can't force things like that. Yeah, it's like the hard truth. Just don't have a big studio. Just <laughs> be little. I think you're seeing more of a rise in like that kind of mentality of like support small business mm -hmm. and be more self sufficient. Right. So we'll see. We'll see what direction it goes. Actually, I feel like the world would be a better place if it was all just smaller studios than just giant ones. Yeah. But that might not be as realistic, but yeah. I think we're past the point of realism impressing people. Like in 2001 with Final Fantasy X, I remember those graphics being like mind blowing. <gasps> But now it's like every game that's released on Sony or Microsoft, you just expect them to look super well rendered and realistic. So it's weird that that became like the norm. Yeah. And then games that are looking more like PlayStation 1 games, indie games, those are getting more reception. And I think it's just, they're different, they're exciting. The people working on them probably aren't spending hours rendering a leaf. Mm -hmm. They can actually spend time doing things that they probably are more passionate right. about. Something simple, but still, you know, striking. Yeah. I really love a lot of the games that are definitely coming out just because they're so simple and they focus more into the quality of other things than just how it looks. Um, Sarenth says, or no, Sarenth just subscribed with a four ninety nine sub. Oh, well, thank you. You're on your way to that fridge. Oh, oh you know what? It's time to change. Is it? Oh, oh that hand. Dang it. Uh, you messed it up. I know. Well, because <laughs> if she's wearing a suit, technically. You would see. It probably needs to be shorter though. It's really tight. I don't like that. Tight, tight, tight. I don't like that at all, actually. Well, thank you, Sarath. Did you? Miss Chibi says, I totally feel you about movies. Did you see A Monster Calls? It's a beautiful movie based on a beautiful book. Great illustrations, a little dark with a great message. I did. I actually saw it with all my roommates last year. Um. I had, I liked the story part of it when they went into like the storybook world. That section I really liked. Yeah. I think the real world stuff, I don't know if it's just because I had a little cousin that died of cancer, so whenever that subject matter is brought up in a film, sometimes I feel like it is just cashing in on the disease a bit, and I think for that reason I was pulled out of it, and I just felt like everything was a little cliche, like the mom who had cancer she was like an angel. Everything she did was perfect. But in life, I feel like, and there are some movies that represent this well, but in life, it isn't like that. There, there are times where you get angry. There are times where you want to hold on to life and you have breakdowns. And I think if the movie would have explored that a little more rather than sh her always just being like 100% caregiver, kind of reading like a flat character, it would have made me enjoy and connect with her more. 
because to me it wasn't to me I was watching a fictional character and I wanted to see more of a real life struggle of a mom going through cancer with a kid and neither of them knowing how to handle it but I did love the message of the tree that comes to help them about how I can I'm here to cure I mean I kind of knew right away what the twist was I'm not going to say what it is but if you guys want to see it I, I, I like that idea of why the tree came to help and the, the boy not fully understanding it at first. So that, I thought, was a great message. Uh, Owen says, I feel like she's saying, peace out with those fingers. <laughs> yeah. Or like, like, bang, bang. Jopasaur says, do you like comedy? And what is the edge of fun? <laughs> um, I love comedies. I think I have, I grew up, admittedly liking more raunchy humor so like south park and even really raunchy and the complete opposite of pc of drawn together so i think as i matured my taste obviously matured with it and it developed into something a little greater my favorite type of comedy now is when they don't point it out it just happens and then like the scene keeps moving they don't pay attention to it and like if you're not focused on it you'll miss it or if you don't understand the reference you'll just miss it Unlike Guardians of the Galaxy, where they laughed at all their jokes. Yeah, it's like, when, I don't really like when movies will set themselves up, and they're like, oh, here it comes, bump set, and here's the punchline, and they like spike, and you're like, well, yeah, but we saw it coming, it's like, the laugh track plays, I don't know. I like humor that takes a little bit more thinking to it than just, here's the pun, we're setting it up for it, and the situation calls for it. But, I mean, I do love puns, don't get me wrong. So, I think if you use them... I freaking love puns. Like, in a way that is unexpected, or if it's clever. If it's on the spot, I love comedians that are, like, on the spot, and they're witty. Those are my favorite, because then you can throw anything at them, and they'll be able to dish it back in a way that is clever, and has some sort of a twist. Sometimes a little more of, like, an insult comic you see those type of things with, but... Those are the ones that are quick thinking. I think my favorite comedian is actually, who's that guy? Bo Burnham, I want to say? I don't know. I think he's really clever with his jokes, and a lot of his jokes have double meanings, or he'll set you up in a way that's like, oh, here comes the bump set spike, but then he won't give it to you, and he'll like take you in another direction. So expecting the unexpected is the type of comedy I like. I mean, then again, I have been known to be more critical of movies and films, so I, I don't know. I could just be a little too harsh sometimes. Paladisi says, oh, there's a great German movie movie about brain cancer that focuses on all of these bad moments and good moments, like accepting and dealing with it in the outbursts and changing personality hard to digest. It's called Honing am Kopf, and is supposedly being remade in Hollywood. Yeah, I will actually look into that. See, that's a type of... Well, I'd have to see it first before I say anything about it, but mm -hmm. I like it when it does feel more... Not only relatable, but it feels real. To the point of where it's like it's visceral like you feel uncomfortable like you're almost like impeding on this other person's life like you are stepping into something you shouldn't be that i like um i am not twitch says i like comedy that makes me laugh <laughs> the best of comedies right <laughs> Hi, Laura. Well, good night all the way from Spain. Uh, Paladisi says, Another point is the studio schedule. Another one of Ed Hook's antidotes, Disney and Pixar set up dates for release re with releases without any material, so people get down to work to create something for a specific date. Ghibli, on the other hand, has their story concept first, and then the release date. Also, their cross-generation goal works better, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Ghibli... Well, it's unfortunate that Ghibli's kind of... It, it, was, it closed for a while, but now with Hayao coming back for his final film, quote-unquote. Mm. <laughs> I, I think it's great that Ghibli's still surviving. I know Hayao wanted to pass it on to his son, Goro, but I don't think that's going to happen. And there was actually a dispute between the father and son, and it was actually kind of sad, but uh, Hayao just didn't think Goro was ready. Anyways, Studio Ghibli is a great example of, they don't do remakes. They do original ideas, and I think that's something that you see in like Eastern versus Western filmmaking, at least with animation. 
I feel like Western animation, it's all about the dollar bill that can be made at the end. Mm -hmm. Where Eastern, they try to like stand out as a testament to their work, their craft. And I think that's why a lot of Americans are so intrigued by Japanese, not only culture, but their animation and anime in some regards. And yeah, if like I, I could still watch Spirited Away and feel how not only creative and original it is, but how inspiring it is because of all the ideas that I've never seen before thrown into one film. And I think that's why Ghibli really stands out versus animation studios nowadays. Oh, and then in terms of the schedule, yeah. And I mean, imagine if you worked at Disney, as soon as you finish one movie, okay, well, you're going to be back at work that next week. I mean, you might get a week off, but that week you come back, you got to be doing working. something because you have a studio full of hundreds of people, literally. So you can't just have them sitting at their desk doing nothing. And I'm sure, yeah, there's people behind the scenes trying to figure out, okay, after this movie, we'll do this. And they, they schedule things. But what they don't schedule a lot of the time is the story and how well it may be received or the quality of it. They just start working on it. They just go. They grind and they push. I'm pretty sure, though, like, they do some other stuff before. I mean, they're not just going to rush into it, but I mean, it's still pretty rushed. And I think video games are kind of falling in the same trap, oh. where once... I think Assassin's Creed was the best example <laughs> oh, of people boy. seeing, like... I, the first one was good because it was so different, right. and yeah, it was a little buggy, and they fixed it, from what I heard, in the second one. But then yeah. everything after that, it just felt like a rehash, and it was just because... They were, they were releasing them way too fast. Yeah. You, Ubisoft was trying to cash in on something that they could see was bringing it, generating a lot of money, and they didn't want to lose that. They wanted to keep that IP as fresh and on people's mind as possible. They tried to be like Call of Duty or something. Yeah. Um, Altered Mage says, when will the contest rules be posted? I'm all hyped up now. They will be posted in the next couple of weeks. So, I'm trust me, I'm just as excited to release this, and I will make a big announcement post when it finally airs. Uh, Joker A says, their ideas aren't all entirely original. Most of their movies are of books or folktales. Oh, yeah. And, like, obviously, Hayo gets his reference from past arts, as do we. And you see that with all animation studios. Their stories might be derivative of other stories that were, like, Grimm's fairy tales. Or some of those Hans Christensen, Anderson, I mean. Or, no, Christensen? And I'm getting confused. One of the two. And yeah, that you might pull some elements from that story, but then you might pull some elements from a different story, and then you collect all these elements, and then you form your own film. So yeah, Spirit Away obviously isn't entirely original, and there's a lot of Japanese folklore that I'm just not familiar with, so me watching it as an 11-year-old boy, everything was kind of new to me, because I was so used to Disney animation and the European fantasy folklore that I wasn't really introduced to anything that was more of uh, Asian folklore until literally until Spirited Away and that movie had such an impact but I watched it recently and I still think it holds up as being such a unique film in its own right so yeah I can now understand where the inspirations came from especially like with the buildings they were, were built that bathhouses are actually a thing I thought that was completely made up no they definitely exist and a lot of the gods that he was inspired from were either gods that already exist in the culture that he lives in or uh, like the bicycle, the, um, what was it? The river god, the he comes in as like the swamp monster and then they pull all this garbage out of him and he comes out as a river god or river spirit. And that was just based on his own experience pulling a bike out of his own river or a river that he lived close by. And it was the idea that the river is so polluted and contaminated that he then brought that inspiration from his life and put it into his movie. That's when something feels original, when you can just sense that they're pulling something from their own life, and the artist is really uh, speaking on that level. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Roth says, I actually bought three Ghibli films today. Well, which oh. ones? Uh, I'm very curious, because most people only know the popular eight, I think they're called, but I'm curious to see which ones you got. Owen says, I gave up on Assassin's Creed. It got bad after Ezio was out of the story. Dude, yeah, that's it. That's over. Game over. <laughs> Game over. Key played them. I did not, so I'm not actually familiar with them. It was disappointing. That's it. Just disappointing. We can move on. 
<laughs> uh, Paladisi says, Ghibli has also this really cool message in their movies regarding fun, or having respect for nature and the world in which you live in. Absolutely. Like, being I a bit... I think Ghibli is always good about having stories, because they're not just... They're not all about the whole thing things that you would think are important from Disney messages, but... True love. Yeah. Um, they also said, like, being a bit more thankful for your life on this planet, especially Mononoke and Nausicaa, but also Spirited Away, such great movies. Oh, yeah. Totally agree. Mononoke actually got better for me as I got older. I remember I saw Spirited Away was my first introduction, and I was like, oh my gosh. I need to watch everything from Ghibli because Spirit Away changed my life. I actually liked Mononoke way more as a kid. Did you? Mm -hmm. I watched it after Spirit Away and I, it wasn't that I was disappointed. I think it was just more gruesome and graphic. And for me, I, I, I've never done well with gore. And there was just a lot of like, not bloody, but it was definitely gory in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. And it was just unexpected. But now that I'm older, oh, I love it. I love it. The movie. I like that the villains are never actually bad, and they're just you are introduced to them as like a villain character, but that's only because of the way we perceive other people and we judge, and they're you're being told from other characters that this is the bad guy, this is the person you shouldn't like, and then after you talk with this quote unquote bad guy, you realize no, it's just another person. They have just a chip on their shoulder usually, or they're power hungry. And that was always interesting to me, and I've always respected that about Ghibli films. Uh, so Rob, what? I was gonna bring up Ursula's bad because she is bad. Yeah, <laughs> Ursula's bad, and like Disney had the problem of villains had to look ugly, quote unquote, and like the heroes had to look pretty and heroic oh looking. My God. So yeah, I think we kind of had this bad perception of. If you're ugly, you have a chip on your shoulder. Or there's something inherently wrong with you. But thanks, Disney. Obviously, that's not the way. <laughs> like Disney movies didn't run every American's life growing up. But it's definitely something that you think about later on. You're like, yeah, that is interesting. And then you look at like Ghibli films. I mean, the villain and even Mononoke. Oh, what's her name? Lady. Oh, that's gonna bother me that I don't know. I don't know. But the mistress. Or not, she was a mistress. She was the head. She was the head of the, the fort, right? Yeah. Lady Aboki? Is that it? I want to say it's the Lady Aboki. That could be wrong. But anyways, uh, she there was nothing ugly about her. She was actually pretty. Not in the glamour pretty, but in the very natural sense. And I, li I like that, too. I mean, Baba, I guess, a little bit had an ugly look to her, but I love that about her. I love that her body and head proportions she were was so, so crazy fun. big. Yeah. Um, Sammy WQ says, or wait, Christy says, okay, completely off topic, but the food in Ghibli movies looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're dripping with uh, goodness. goodness. The way that they, they paint them they're amazing. Especially Spirit Away had so much food in it. Especially in the no-face running scene. Yeah. Uh, Sammy WQ says, Exactly. I love the level of detail Miyazaki puts in regarding that childlike element and also empowering little girls, women, and children. Encouraging them to do something rather than nothing. Even if it's as simple as carrying around a little baby turned rat. That was actually one of my favorite characters in Spirit Away. <laughs> The little rat baby hmm. but yeah and something you you see a lot more now is like the empowering of little girls which is great i think miyazaki was doing it back in the time where it wasn't as normal and mm -hmm. i think back in like the early 90s and even 80s and i mean there's some there were some movies that do it don't get me wrong but a lot of them and i, I hate keep referencing disney but yeah they were more of like the damsel in distress type for girls and then the guys were the heroic ones where in Ghibli films, it was usually always a girl lead character, and they were proving themselves, and they weren't like... They weren't useless. Well, not only that, but they weren't perfect either. And I think that's the problem with some films nowadays, where it's like, oh, let's empower women, let's throw them in there, but they can do nothing wrong. And that's the, the Mary Sue curse, I think it's oh, yeah, called. Mary Sue, yep. And that I don't like either. So there has to be a balance where they have to feel real, and you have to see them struggle, because when you see someone struggle and then overcome it, 
that's when they become a strong character. It's not like they're always strong and you just, okay, I guess they're strong. It's like, oh no, how do they come up to a challenge that actually is a challenge in their life and how do they overcome it? That's what a strong person is. Ah, Eboshi. Thank you. Uh, Altered Mage says, Have you seen the anime movie Wolf Children? The background art mm. reminded me of Ghibli a bit. Yes. Actually, the, those proportions remind me of your character so much, especially the... Um, the boy. Children? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually, did, I did a paint over one of the scenes. Did you really? I, did. I didn't know that. It was a long time ago. That yeah, they had great backgrounds. That movie made me cry forever. <laughs> the ending? <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> and, you know, this is a complete tangent, but you know what that movie touched on? And I didn't even think about this until my boss mentioned it, is apparently girls will tend to ignore their moms growing up and it's not until they become moms themselves or they're older will they start to really have a deep connection with them and then they'll like talk more on a common basis and then apparently boys are more the opposite they have more of a close connection with their mom and then when they leave when they go to college and have kids of their own they tend not to talk to them much at all and i didn't think that was true until I, i'm seeing it now all the time with people and even in my own family my sister and my mom did not get along my sister was a wild child and she was like one of those mean girls in high school, admittedly. But then college came, she got her stuff together, and now my mom and her are really, really close. But me and my brother, we don't talk to my mom that much, and it's usually my mom calling us, or my sister will call my mom. I don't know if that's true with you guys, but I think that movie, like when, when I was watching it, I was like, oh my god, this is like my life Swap. with siblings. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll do the last. Oh yeah, I like how this is looking. It almost has like a layer of gloss on it. That's really nice. Gloss. Gloss. There's some crunchy stuff there. No, I like that. Okay. Tim likes crunchy stuff. Oof, just not in food. Where are we at? We are at... That one. This one. Pal says, Ghibli does this even in their games. Nino Kuni had an immense plot twist. Not gonna spoil it, but that was some heart-wrenching... Or that was heart-wrenching. The... They do a great job of establishing context and making you feel with the characters. I really like when movies really like make you connect with the characters. It it hurts me when uh, movies just kind of brush over or like games just brush over the characters in general. And there's like a scene where you're supposed to feel bad for them or something, and you you're don't. just like, I never connected this character, so why am I trying to now? I don't know. Why should I feel bad? Not that, you know, <laughs> what, whatever. <laughs> Can you see someone in pain? She's like, oh. I don't know you. Uh, Pal also says, the comment was regarding enemies, villains, and give the movies. I like how the world is really black and white and ghibli. Yes. I think it's way more realistic to think that things are more gray. gray. Yeah. Owen says, have you seen Oseem? It's a strange one. What point it? No, actually, I've never even heard of that one. Me either. Oh, I love when I hear a new movie that I haven't heard of before. Write it down. O C. Oh, you nice got marker. It. Why do we even keep these? I don't know. O C. Thank you. Ellis says, "Have you watched Your Name? That's one of my favorite anime movies." Oh, that's that new one that like Is gained a, a lot one? of traction earlier mm. this year. No, we haven't. We wanted to. So we'll, we're definitely going to watch it eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, here it's really great. I'm going to do some editing first. Edit. Palm Poco was strange, but I liked it. It says altered me. <laughs> Palm Poco was strange, but it was cute. Oh my god, filters, finally. You're yeah, right. It was kind of like um, Ponyo. I think it's cute. It's definitely not my favorite by any means, but it does what it set out to do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Best movie, Gabe. <laughs> Goofy movie. What? Best anime from Gabe. Goofy <laughs> movie. Uh, extremely Goofy movie was fantastic. Oh my god, Corey in the house. Guys. <laughs> Elise. Best movie from Disney was Fantasia. I <gasps> agree. That's like Key's favorite. It is like my favorite movie. 
How do you feel about this? Ooh. I thought you were going to do color. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> As in, like, adding color to it. I don't know, just maybe a hint. I mean, I do like it. It's a little hint mm -hmm. of color. Yeah, I'm going to go in and do some rendering. Render. I don't even know what's going on in the chat anymore. <laughs> what's happening? Uh, Alder Mage says, I like their explanation of the energy drink. I don't know. What? Wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe's also saying best Disney movie was Air Bud. <laughs> I actually forgot that movie existed, and now I'm in hate because I remember it, that it existed. Oh, you don't like Air Bud? <sighs> Dog movies. Oh, yeah, they're always sad. <laughs> Sammy says, Mine too, Key. That and Alice in Wonderland. It scared me as a kid, but I think that's why I liked it. As for Fantasia, I love the centaurs. Sammy, I mean, that's like the only part I would watch. And I would actually destroy my Fantasia VHS. Like, the beginning of it was super scratchy because I would always just fast forward through that part. <laughs> that part's whatever. Joe says, Timmy Key, thanks for taking the time to answer my questions. Yeah, of course. Thanks for asking. Oh, I missed one. Ella says, best movie ever will still be Spirit the Stallion of Cimarron. <laughs> Don't know if I can even count how many times I've watched it. I know someone that watched that movie a lot. They was it obsessed. you? No, it wasn't oh. actually. <laughs> A movie that I always watched over and over, Lion King 2. Yeah! Because when I was in second or first grade, before the movie came out, I told everyone my favorite movie was Lion King 2, even though I never watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> such a strange child. <laughs> my favorite movie is Lion King 2. No questions. <laughs> no questions. I knew I would love it, and I did, so... <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> They're like, but what was your favorite scene? I said no questions. <laughs> Pala says, since we're suggesting movies, have you guys heard of Oakshell on Netflix? As a vegetarian and animal lover, this movie hit me really hard. Mm. We did. Uh, yeah. So I actually made all the roommates watch it because I heard about it. I was really excited about it. and mm. I definitely feel you. Yeah, I'm vegan, so I get it. And the whole house is pretty much vegetarian. The, the problem that I think we had with Oakshot, man, I feel like we're just hating on movies. We're today. sorry. I don't mean to. Um, it was good, but just, just the execution of the entire movie wasn't super fantastic. I think that's really the main issue. I think the humor wasn't exactly my taste, and I feel like it was trying to be a little too Wes Anderson instead of being its own type of movie. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the actions didn't feel justifiable to me of why they were doing it and the mm -hmm. characters then became a character and it didn't feel like a person yeah. which if that's what they were going for I think I'd have to rewatch it because maybe I just didn't get it maybe it is supposed to be more campy but the characters never felt real to me especially the main one she was just like Okja 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 like there was nothing she was about super, her like every, all the focus for the entire movie was Okja and no one really like gave themselves characters so it kind of dehumanized the humans in a way but I guess that one we might have to rewatch because I feel like we missed it. Because I've had a lot of people talk to me about it, and I'm always like, ah, I wasn't really a big fan. And they're like, really? Like, I loved it, blah, blah. And I always try to give movies the benefit of the doubt where, yeah, maybe I just was thinking of something else that day. I might have had a bad day. I watch a movie, and that influences my feel of the movie. Yeah. But we all watched it as roommates, and all of us were like, did, did you guys like it? And we were like, no, not really. So I don't know. That one was that one was a little interesting. Gabe says favorite movie for Tim Pacific Rim. Oh hell yeah! I can't wait for that sequel. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh! Giant robots fighting things. Yeah, that's all I need in a movie. Owen says my favorite movie that I will watch nonstop is Treasure Planet. I love Treasure Planet. It's good. That I, one and Beauty oh. and the Beast are my favorite Disney. What were you going to say? Just that time during Disney was great when they were doing these really weird movies. What you guys probably don't know is that Treasure Planet was actually a commercial failure. 
So they had to like recoup after Treasure Planet, and that's why it's not, I guess, more well known. Is because it didn't do well. Right. And it's really disappointing because I think that's actually one of their best films. Atlantis came around, came out around the same time. Uh huh. Yeah. Which also was not a success. Or wait, that one I don't know. I shouldn't I say think that. That one, one I don't know. That one's probably like a medium. I won't say it was a super success. I don't know. We'd have to look it up. Yeah. Sammy says, also, me too, Lion King too, love songs, romance, and the roasty toasty And you pandy. I always think the hippos when they do the... Oh, <laughs> on the swing? Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Uh, I played too many um, Lion King and Lion King 2 games on the computer too. That was, that was my life. Uh, everything Lion King. What would you say your favorite Disney movie is? Fantasia. Okay, so it does beat Lion King. Yes. Okay. I mean, as a kid, I mean, now. I don't know. All I would watch was Disney movies as a kid. Cause, I mean, that's what we had. Yeah, I feel like that's a very American thing. It's like, or at least for our generation, we just grew up on Disney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Road to El Dorado was a good movie. That yeah. was cute. I feel like surprisingly, Prince of Egypt was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, even though it's a biblical film, and people don't know it, it's actually like DreamWorks is that's a DreamWorks film. And they had a whole animation studio that was hand-drawn. That's why that one was hand-drawn. But that was another commercial failure. So that's why DreamWorks doesn't do hand-drawn animation anymore. Which is weird thinking that it was uh, that movie that kind of set it off. Why do people like 3D? I'll never understand. I don't know. 3D's good. I think Up was great. Wally was great. Yeah, when they're using odd proportions, I guess. I don't know. Oh, in that regard. Like, you got Boss Baby. (laughs) <laughs> and the emoji were you trying to say about boss baby i didn't see boss baby uh, <gasps> lion king one and a half yes that was great i loved lion actually king one didn't and a half. see that one because i was like what is this it's not a third one what is this and you should watch that one's so funny actually i probably did watch it i just don't remember it's whether it's like from timon and tim or timon and sim yeah it's all about pumbaa's perspective right yeah So you guys got me talking about movies. I can talk about movies for hours. I just ramble. I know that we gotta cut the stream soon, so. Uh, Palace says, actually, I love everything with, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Idris Elba. In it. He saves the day. Not sure about Dark Tower, though. I haven't I seen Dark know. Tower. I Have didn't. you? Nope. I don't oh. watch nothing. What? Yeah, you do. You watch oh. Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, people were just talking about Disney. Mm-hmm. I guess it's good because we're supposed to cut the stream off anyways. Oh, guys, we're going to Subway. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like how this is like if we just edge out some of these areas. Oh. Uh. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it freaks out. Yeah. Yeah, I like how it's coming out. Oh, yeah, put those colors back on. <laughs> yeah, right. That looks pretty cool. I'll definitely finish this up, but yeah, expect the con- and the hand needs to be redone, but expect the contest to be announced in the next two weeks, and mm-hmm. it will start launching. It'll probably be throughout the month of September, and maybe trickle into October. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all we got for today. Thank you so much. And next week, we're doing the stream with all six of the roommates here at Bond House, which is very exciting. We get excited doing these, and we have fun doing them, so hopefully you can come around for that stream. I know school is starting for a lot of you, but... Uh, if not, you can always watch them on YouTube afterwards. And I think that's all I got. Oh, and then just a soft reminder that if you want my book, it comes out tomorrow. It's the newest sketchbook. And I will be posting it probably in the afternoon for uh, America and international. So I'm really proud of it. And I can't wait to ship it to you guys. So thank you so much. You got any last words? Last words. Beautiful. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.